Hi, this is Phil from PDQ Merch Enterprises and the ATM Mastermind Group page. And in today's video, we're going to talk about my five favorite tips about being in the ATM business. All right, always remember we have an ATM A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business. We also have an ATM Mastermind Group page that's free to join for like-minded individuals just like yourself who want to learn a little bit more about the ATM business and be in a community of like-minded ATM business owners such as yourself. Always remember here at ATM Mastermind Group that we buy your freedom back one transaction at a time. All right, drum roll please. Without further ado, we're going with the five, my five favorite tips about being in the ATM business. Tip number one, don't lead with your heart. Now, I see a lot, of, a lot of you guys in the ATM community and I talk to you on the phone all the time and here's what I hear. Oh, Phil, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing. I want to be the right business owner. I was talking to the store owner. I'm trying to earn their respect. I'm trying to earn their trust. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to grow my business and I want to do it the right way. And all that is great, but this is business and business is business. And a lot of times you guys are trying to give, you give away too much. You give too much surcharge away. You, instead of getting a five year location agreement, what you guys do is you guys do a one year location agreement with a 30 day trial or a 90 day trial. If you guys want to do charity, hey, I'm all for charity. Go to church, give it away in a collection, in, in collection bin. Or if you want, you can, there's, there's, when we're in a lot of these neighborhoods, there's tons of homeless people. Help buy them lunch, give them some extra money. Buy him some booze for Christ's sake. Whatever it is, if you feel charitable, then help those people. But the store owners, you know what? This is business, and we got we got in this ATM business so we can get from wherever we're at to the next level. I don't know if this is paying for your kid's college fund, or reducing your student loans, or just getting some extra money to buy an extra car, or just take your your wife or your girlfriend on vacation. I don't know what the reason is. You know those reasons. That's why we're in it. We're not here to do charity with the store owners. They're great people, but we gotta protect ourselves. So just remember, don't lead with your heart. Point number two, if the store owner wants X, then we want Y. Always remember, as soon as they're asking for something, then we want something. So, examples of this. What would be examples, Phil? I don't know what you're talking about. X and Y, I don't know, it sounds like geometry, trigonometry, algebra, I didn't like that in school. What are you talking about? Here's what I'm talking about. If the store owner says, look, I don't want to do a five-year location agreement. No problem. I can't give you a dollar a transaction. I can only give you a quarter. Our standard deal is a three-year deal to get to give any commissions. And I was basing it on a five-year deal, which is standard for our company. I can give you 50 cents. If you don't want to sign that five-year agreement, I completely understand. I just can't pay a commission on this deal. That's an X for Y. Okay, where the guy says, you know what? I only want you to do a $2 surcharge. Not a problem. I just can't pay you any commission. That's not a problem. We can do that, but they have to give something. They want something, you want something. Remember, it's this, this is mutual agreement. They're, you're providing an ATM, which costs money, cash in the ATM, which costs money, your time, which costs money, and they're getting a service. So you're giving X, they're getting Y. And remember, that's how you negotiate everything during, during the course of this business. Point number three, now we're in the store. The owner, before you go in there and you talk to the business owner, I need you to scope out that, eight, that store. Where am I gonna put it? Where's the best spot? Where's the worst spot? And then what you say is, you're gonna cut the deal with the location owner and they're gonna, they will say, where do you wanna put it? I wanna put it right here. You want to put it in the, the highest traffic area you can think of that's secure for yourself because sometimes there's some smash and grabs there's some things that happen but you want to put it in a high traffic area sometimes it's where the washrooms are sometimes it's in the front of the store if it's a bar maybe again where the washrooms are next to the jukebox is always a good spot you want to put it in a high traffic high visible area you're in one of these hotels that's less than 200 rooms you want to put it right next to the front desk if it can get right between the front desk that would be great you want to put it in that hotel lobby right when, where that door is right by the front desk that's the best way if they tell you oh we got to go in the business center we got to go down the hall by the vending machines you're out it won't make any money you're wasting a couple thousand dollars if not three 
and it's not going to be a good location. Don't waste your time. Number four, make sure the ATM is solving a problem. There's no need to put an ATM in a high-end restaurant when they take credit cards and the average, the average price on the menu is $70. It's just not going to make any money. Put it where you can. You go to a festival, they're cash only, home run. You go to a, a pumpkin patch or a, a corn maze, those places, cash only, great. Home run, ATM. Cash only diners, cash only this, cash only that. All great spot for an ATM. Make sure you solve a problem. Make sure people are going to your location, your ATM, because they need cash, because they have to pay for something, or they have to take cash out of their, your ATM to get something. That's what we're doing. We're solving a problem. If it's not solving the problem, which is a payment problem, then it's not going to be a good situation. That's why dispensaries, cash only, works for in the ATM business. All right? So make sure that you solve a cash payment problem. In five, last but not least, always remember to get an agreement. This clearly spells out what you're going to do. You're going to give the, the location X. How many transactions? You're going to tell them, hey, I need X to, before I can give you a commission. Or it spells out how often you're going to service or what's it involved. It also spells out how long you're going to be there, when you can pull out your ATM, who's liable if, it gets, if you get robbed, things of that nature. You want to have that all in your agreement and you want to protect yourself and your business. Always remember, you got to set yourself up with a corporation. We get asked a lot of times, oh, can I do it with a sole proprietor? Well, how are you going to work that into a contract? They're going to sue you. They're going to sue you personally. They're going to sell your, your DBA. And you're going to work yourself into a big problem. We want to avoid all that. Always remember to sell it to a corporation, but it helps with the process of the agreement. All right. Always remember to like and subscribe our YouTube channel below. And always remember we have an ATM A to Z course that teaches you from A to Z how to be successful in the ATM business along with an ATM Mastermind group page that's free to join for like-minded individuals just like yourself who want to learn a bit, little bit more about the ATM business. I got uh, one more point. I'm going to throw that over at the ATM Mastermind group page. And I want to say thank you guys very much for helping us with the channel. We've been growing it up and it's getting bigger and bigger. And I hope we're adding value to the ATM community. And I'll see you guys over at the ATM Mastermind Group page. Thank you.